Hi there. Welcome into My Chamber TV, the heartbeat of the Tampa Bay community. I'm your host, Barbara Marville Kelly, and I'm excited because we are on location once again featuring the Upper Tampa Chamber of Commerce right here in Oldsmar. We're at the flea market, and we're going to be giving some great information for those of you that like to shop, find unusual happenings and products and things of that nature. And with me, we're actually introducing Ron Simon. Hello, Barbara. A long-time resident here. Been here for 15 years here at the flea market with fishing supply liquidators. So, so. tell me about that. What, what is fishing supply liquidators? Can we get some good deals there? Oh, you can get some great deals. In like fact, what? Well, for instance, what we do is we kind of a little different. We're not just a normal fishing tackle store. Now, we carry everything. We do full service. But what we do is we buy out other stores and we liquidate them. And we basically bring in huge quantities of certain items and we price them where they're so low price that other stores buy from us to resell in their stores. Cool. So our stock changes constantly. We always have new product. We feature items that are for freshwater, saltwater, offshore, uh, you name it. We carry it at different times of the year. It may not be here this week, but two weeks later we may have it. So it's a new concept. And what we try to do, the key is I got people that really know how to fish. They love to fish. They love to serve people. So what they do is we teach people how to catch fish, not just how to use product. I love that. Education is key, right? Correct. I, it, I have never gone fishing in my life. Never, ever. What am I missing? Oh, you're missing the experience. It's not the most expensive meal you can have is catching your own fish. So it's cheaper to go out and buy a fish meal. But the ex priceless experience of going there, making memories with your children, with your family, it's just uh, it's very fulfilling to see fathers and sons or families come in and show us pictures of the fish they've caught. And they say, wow, we had such a great time. And thank you for helping us. And that's worth you know, everything. You know, I'm so glad that you brought that up because families are getting back to their nest. They're getting back to doing things with one another. I mean, really taking that quality time. And as soon as you mentioned that, I envisioned my son and my grandson. And we were just here this past weekend. And next time they come, we're going to come shopping at, at your store. Oh, I appreciate that. Cause, and bring the family. We have, we bring in so much different types of tackle that people from up north can actually go up and uh, we sell ice fishing equipment during the north uh, winter time the snowbirds come down so we sell it in snowbirds we sell it to the local people we carry a wide range of different styles of tackle because there's all different types of fish but we sell tackle for every fish you can think of a fish in alaska fish up north all the inshore species down here we have a lot this is so exciting this is very interesting because what you're saying is that you're able to engage with your customer it's not like going online that can take us forever you're not getting any kind of demonstration you're not getting the kind of knowledge that you really need mm -hmm. especially if you're like me I've never gone fishing I wouldn't know the first thing I mean where do you what do you do with this hook thing I mean that's you know what I mean so you're giving that education exactly. experience and that's something you can't get online mm -hmm. uh, we used to sell online about 10 12 years ago Ago. Mm -hmm. We went before Amazon really got popular, but it was such a headache, and we found that um, we spent more time talking to people here at the store that we developed long-term relationships with our customers. We have customers that have been with me from day one for 15 years. They keep coming back, and they bring their children with them. Uh -huh. It's kind of neat to see the progression. But yeah, it's, it's a lot interesting coming into a store where you can learn something and have the camaraderie of being with other fellow fishermen. Yes. Sometimes I'll come in, yes. there'll be five or six people standing there talking about telling fish stories. Yes. And it's created a nice, uh, we've got a lot of friendships that we've created over the years. I guess so. I mean, with a history of 15 years, that's quite a good little t amount of time, to say the least. And it started out as a hobby. Um, really? Yeah, this was just supposed to be a part-time thing. I started, and, um, well, I thought, well, you know, I've got a bunch of fishing tackle. We'll go and start selling it. One thing led to another, it snowballed, and it just um, became a full-time business where now we employ uh, four people, and we're open seven days a week, and we're just basically, we do full service from, we spool reels, we put line on the reels, we fix rod tips, um, so we give advice on how to catch the fish. But the whole idea is we provide you with, we don't call them fishing poles, we call them catching poles, because we teach you how to catch the fish, not just to go out and fish. Oh, oh, wow. Oh. What, this is such a, a plethora of information. I'm <laughs> glad to be doing the interview with you here because, you know, when you um, are looking for products, it, I always say that time is our most valuable commodity. 
And I, spending so much time on the internet and shopping that way, it's not the same as ex experience as walking into a shop like yours. And it, if I understand you correctly, you'll do some repairs on, and, and yeah, things of if, that nature? Yeah, if you're, it, well, we have a repair person who works on rods and reels and we'll send out, tell you who to go to get those repaired at the best prices. See, we know all the people in the industry. So we can say, here, if you want this fixed, go here. It's like with certain lures. We can tell you which fish where they're biting. We'll tell you what lure to use, when to use it. Where a lot of places they keep their secrets to themselves, we actually tell the customers how to catch the fish. That's that's key. Well, no wonder you're so successful. What, when, where, why, who, all that? Well, I'm successful because my employees, they love to fish. I have a manager, Bob Kirby, who is just passionate about fishing. And he trains the employees to where they want to just serve the customer. And it's all about serving customers. Mm -hmm. It's not trying to sell tackle. And in fact, if you're just trying to, you know, we're not trying to hit a sales goal. We're trying to get, cut. our motto is if we can teach you how to catch fish, you'll tell your friends, your friends will come and come back to us and it'll be a generation. It's a long-term business plan, not a short-term. And you'll never be hungry a day in your life. That's well, for sure. Well, you know the expression, you could teach a man, teach a man to fish, feed him for a day. Yeah. Right? for a lifetime. So it's a, one of those models that we believe in. And I'm also, one of the things is um, we want to be a positive role model. All of us in the store, we try to um, not encourage people, not only through how to catch fish, but also basically how to be good people. And, you know, I call us sort of fishers of men. You know, I'll, I'll you know, I, I battled cancer and I beat cancer about a year ago. Oh, God bless you. And I was in the five, I'm coming in the 5% club where I, I was not expected to make it through it and I was healed. And now I use it as a testimony, and people are all encouraged. I have people coming in all the time. I'm dealing with cancer, so I use this as a platform to encourage people See? that are going through the same battle I am. It's your mission ministry. I, have, I love it. I have it. a reason to be here. Oh, so that, that's even a more well-rounded story right from the heart. But, you know, to be able to come into your store and shop, it, you're right, it's an experience. Just for, This is an experience with the interview, just learning what you're doing here at the flea market. Um, you know, if you've never shopped here at the Oldsmar Flea Market, it's above and beyond what you could ever imagine. I mean, just listen to Ron Simon here talking about his business. You've been here 15 years. There's a reason for that. People are engaging with you. You're engaging back with them. It's, it sounds like it's like one big party. It's, it's believe me, we have a lot of, like, if people come here just to come and talk to us and share their stories, but we're really excited that um, Grady's coming in and changing a lot of the dynamics of the market to where it's going to be even more exciting with more of the, the food venues coming in, uh, the entertainment. It's going to become a destination where, sort of like a Disney, where you want to go there for the fun and the excitement. Oh, by the way, you're going to have a good meal, you're going to have good entertainment, and you're going to get some great deals for whatever you want to do. So it's kind of like a, an overall destination becoming. That, so. That's exciting. And you know, the uh, Upper Tampa Bay Chamber of Commerce is all about that. They are movers and shakers in this town. They go on the outskirts and just they just make things happen with manufacturing and so much. It's, it's really an honor to be part of this particular chamber and doing our chamber show because we can raise the awareness through the internet and let people see what you're all doing here. I mean, I can only come here early in the morning before it gets really hot. I don't think I have ever, in the 20 years that I've been coming here, I don't think I have ever shopped or gone through every booth. I, it would probably take me several days, if not yep. a week, to and do that. And it's always changing. Yes, so, yes. You, know, you may not see someone, maybe an empty booth one week, next week it's full of product and stuff, like our inventory changes all the time. That's what's exciting. I like that. It's, I like everything's that. Everything's always changing, so there's something new and exciting. Right, so, right. So, so imagine, maybe you're coming down here to Florida, and you want to take in the sites, you want to Go and do something that's fun. I don't know who doesn't enjoy going to the flea market, but if you come to this one right off the of Tampa Road and maybe you're going back up north and it's going to be really cold and you could do some ice fishing there, you can actually <laughs> shop for those products right here with Ron. Take them home with you right exactly. then and there. You don't have to order. Don't have to pay for shipping and handling, right? Which you do on, online. We, yeah, exactly. <laughs> for and the you, most part. And I get called every day, will you ship this product to me? Because my deals, I advertise them locally, but they find out all over the country. And I say, no, sorry, we don't ship. We're just too busy. And the inventory changes too much every day that we can't keep it up. So That is so, that's phenomenal. It's fun. I it's, had no idea. Yeah, it's, it, and fishing is a multi-billion dollar industry in Florida. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of, like I said, it's always changing and it's always exciting. And the weather affects how everything happens. And usually here, everything's covered in the market. So you can walk around even yeah. in bad weather. If it's cold, yeah. if it's yeah. hot, you can always, or rainy, you, there's always something to do here. Exactly. And that's exciting too. So what made you, have you always been a fisherman? I grew up fishing from day one. It kept me out of trouble growing up. So that was one of the things that 
That's another thing with fishing. If you get your, your children involved in fishing at a young age, They'll stay out of trouble. You know, it keeps them busy. It keeps yes. them from getting bored and yes. trying to find things to uh, pass the time. So, and that was fortunate for me. I was uh, a fisherman from an early age. And as I said, it started out as a hobby. So it wasn't like something I had to make money on. I just enjoyed it. But we originally started out to save, save Tampa Bay fishermen money for tackle. That's one of our, our motives when we oh, first started. okay, okay. And, and it kind of grew. I said, hey, this is a great deal. Then we find more deals and people started calling me and saying, hey, I'm going out of business. You want to buy my inventory? I bought distributors, I bought warehouses, I bought semi-truck loads of stuff, and we just pass along the savings to the customer. Isn't that wonderful? And it gives people an opportunity for a hobby that is really affordable because if you, even if you walk into brick and mortar and go to the fishing tackle, to, I mean, you're oh. going to put together a nice package that's going to cost a nice chunk of change. Yeah, we, we beat everyone's prices. Our motto, we used to say, if you, we can't sell it to you cheaper than anyone else, we give it to you for free. That was one of our mottos. We did really? that for 10 years. And now we just basically say we got a few items that are about the same average price as everyone else, but 90 95% of our inventory is more competitively priced than anyone else, and we show you how to use it. That's the key. That's really, really fun. I, I, I'm definitely going to come visit you and sure. see what you got. Maybe you will make a fisher person out of me. There you go. <laughs> There's help for everybody. <laughs> hey, exactly. And then I'll know that I'll never be hungry because I can go out and do my own fishing. And that's like all year round here, right? All year round. And you educate us on where and when. And it's almost like it's this custom fit. That's why we've been successful. And that's why we have such a large following. We, You can follow us on Facebook um, if you... Friend me, Ron Simon, okay. on Facebook. You I can will. Find, and our website is fishingsupplyliquidators.com. You can go to our website, and on our wholesale page, we list our daily specials that we have. And we give away a lot of tackle. That's another thing. We give away so much. We've given away tens of thousands of dollars in free tackle over the last year. Tens of thousands. Wow. That's, so. That is so exciting. Well, I want to thank you for joining us here on My Chamber TV. We'll be back with more in a moment. Okay. Hi everyone, welcome into My Chamber TV. It is the heartbeat of the Tampa Bay community. Today we are featuring the Upper Tampa Bay Chamber of Commerce. We are right here in the heart of Oldsmar at the flea market. It's a, it's a fun place to be, and I must tell you, and we are interviewing some people that actually have their business here for many, many years. This gentleman sitting next to me is Deason Smith, and he is with T&D Golf. Yes, ma'am with 32 years of history? Yes, ma'am. Right here at the flea market? Yes, ma'am. Been here 32 years. So? Started when I was around 18 years old. Really? Yes, ma'am. How about that? Started, uh, we bought an existing business here um, at the time. I uh, had two booths. Uh-huh. And uh, throughout the years, we expanded as people moved around and what have you. Sure. Now we currently have 18 booths. Really? Yes, ma'am. Oh, my yeah. goodness. Specializing in golf, basically golf club repair uh -huh. um, is our big service. Uh, uh, new and used golf equipment, golf balls, uh, junior clubs, ladies. Pretty much cover the whole gamut in mm -hmm. regards to golf. Mm -hmm. So I'm guessing that with, um, I mean, this is a profession. Golf is like, I mean, it's everywhere. It's a it's a good thing to be doing and what you're doing to be able to save people to come in for golf club repair, but also to purchase or even get started. I've never golfed, ever, and we live on a golf course. Where do I get started with you? Right here with me because we pretty much cater to the people that are just getting started. Yeah. A lot of folks want to come in. I'm not sure if I want to, you know, if I can handle this or I can, you know, just want to get started. Looking for an inexpensive set to get me on the golf course. Come to me. I'll help you out with that, get you into something inexpensive. You like the game, you bring it back. I'll be happy to take it back on trade. Oh, really? Then we can move you up into a little, you know, higher end equipment or later model equipment and help you out with lessons and things of that nature as well. Wow, lessons too. That's, that's very, very invigorating for somebody that's just starting out. Yes, ma'am. normally, I, I mean, I'm just guessing. I'm just throwing this out there. Correct me if I'm wrong, but uh, they go other places. Can they go ahead and, you know, trade in for, to upgrade, or do they have to just try to sell that on their own typically, or give them away? Typically, no, ma'am. We take the stuff back. A lot of the local um, larger shops are not allowed or don't take their clubs back. Really? Uh, yes, ma'am. That's really, that's a good point. It's yeah. a very good point. Yeah. So yeah. what are some of the challenges with those of us that are afraid to start 
a golf game. <laughs> well, you know, the game's, you know, it's quite difficult. Um, you know, challenges, if you've never played, first and foremost, like I say, come to us, get an inexpensive set, and go out and get some lessons. Mm -hmm. Would be, you know, in your best interest. To see if you really like it, to see if it resonates with you, right? Right. That's why we kind of specialize in, I wouldn't say, uh, not a lower end, but we sell new and used. Mm -hmm. And uh, we buy, sell, and trade. So okay. that's why, you know, we encourage you to come in, get something that, that, that would fit your criteria. If you're just getting started, go out. If you like it, bring it back. Then we'll take you and point you in the right direction to help you out with, you know, lessons and get you to where you can get out there and hopefully break 90. <laughs> 32 years. See, it, that really does say a lot. Now, have you always been a golfer? Did you start as a wee one? or? Yes, ma'am. My dad was a, club, a PGA professional in North Carolina. He, okay. he uh, started when, in 1972. Um, I've been playing golf all my life. Um, Played in quite a few junior tournaments in North Carolina. I'm from North Carolina. Um, my brother also is a very good player. Um, he, uh, we have a store on Waters Avenue in Tampa as well. My okay. brother Ben does a very similar business to what we do. Um, yes, it's been a passion of mine forever. I, uh, I grew up with a club in my hand from the time I could stand on two feet. And it came naturally to you? You're yes, ma'am. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. Well, my dad was a very good teacher, and, yes. and he was easy going on us, and uh, I just, I picked it up, and I played well pretty much up until, you know, you, you go along and get married and have kids, and then, you know, you don't play as much, which is interesting as well. Um, here at the market, you know, we started, you know, like I said, when I was 18 or 19, um, I was fortunate enough to meet a young lady that worked here in the market, mm. married her, mm -hmm. and... Uh, We've been married for 25 years now. Oh, and that's we have great. Two wonderful boys. And, and how uh, old are they? They're 17 and 15. Oh. And uh, I, you know, I just have to, by the grace of God, I met her here, and the boys are involved working here. And, you know, the Old Mar Flea Market has just been so good to me. It's, uh, it's been great. Well, you know, it has such a draw, but I had no idea. And I've come here for almost 20 years, and I have certain things that I'm looking for. I come in and, and, and I leave. But I had no idea that someone like yourself has a golf shop with the amenities and what you do with the services and the education and even lessons. Yes, I mean, that in itself is exciting. So to be able to come in here, and it's like a one-stop shop, basically. It's a one-stop shop, yes. There's, if you can't find it here, you can't find it anywhere. Really? I'll tell you right now, I've been here, like I say, since 87 or so, and if, if you're looking for tools or, or, or knickknacks or what have you, it's I mean, true. you can get anything. It's true. It, it really is. I've ne it seems like I, I set my goals, I come here, and I know where to go to find them, and it's amazing, and you can save so much money coming here. And let's talk about that with your shop as far mm -hmm. as the golf goes. When you're talking co comparison-wise out there in the marketplace or even shopping online, Okay, I can't even imagine purchasing golf clubs online because don't you have to it's get it in your hand and get a feel for it? Yes, yes, it's quite personal. You need to be able to hold it. I, you know, I like to deal one-on-one -on -one with a customer, be able to hold it, you know, feel it. I like to see, like, you know, ladies, uh, you know, sometimes they need something cut down and needs to be a little bit shorter. We do club repair and things of that nature while you wait. So if you were to come into the shop and say, hey, Deason, I need a, a driver, well, I would say, okay, what do you think of this? I say, listen, that's a little bit too long. Cut it down, put another grip on it, do it for you while you wait. You take it out, you hit it, you don't like it, you bring it back. And I go, here you go, let's try something else. Really? No charge. Yes, ma'am. So you do that like right on the spot. I can come in, I'm going to start golfing next weekend. I can come in this coming weekend, and you can take care of me from start to finish there. Right there inside 30 minutes, yes. Wow. And if you don't like it, like I say, you can bring it back. Another big part of our business is... Uh, Golf balls. Mm -hmm. uh, we do a lot with, um, uh, we have divers that we've, we've contracted with different courses and we do uh, used golf balls. We have a big used golf ball business. Really? So, yes, ma'am. So, let's, for instance, if you want to come in. So, is that where I would start with used golf balls? <laughs> well, <laughs> I you would can, lose you, those you, new you, ones. You, you can buy a golf ball from $0.10 cents a piece to $2.50 <laughs> a piece. Yeah, we do a big business with used golf balls. We probably process 
between 300,000 to 500,000 used balls a year. Really? Yes, ma'am. So, for instance, there's a particular ball that sells for like $47 a dozen. You can come into my store and get it for 23 and, it, wow. and, and if you would put them side by side with the new and the used, you couldn't tell the difference. See that? I couldn't tell the difference anyway. <laughs> you'd be at the 25 cent table. <laughs> I would? <laughs> yeah. yeah, you'd be satisfied with that. <laughs> <laughs> that's pretty funny. That's, that's so good to know, though, that you can come in there and, because there's, I mean, with the economy, it's up, it's down, it's this, it's that. But the one thing that I find, which is a commonality among people, we want to be busy. We want to have fun. Sure. And if you have that yearning to learn and get started with golf, this is a great place to get started. There's no question. You're educating. You're, you're really giving some great value. And to be able to walk away from a shop, which is what I'm used to, coming from many years ago, you walk in and you get that good old-fashioned family feel. We're family-oriented. Mom and Dad. Yes. My brother, myself, my wife, my kids are all involved in the business right now. See that? But we want you to be a part of the family as well. And if you come in, we treat you like family. And, uh, you know, we really appreciate uh, so, you know, so many years, like I say, 32 years now I've been here. And, wow. and, and it's, it's amazing. Jason, don't you think that people are, now you're, you're amongst the public, you talk to a lot of people, right? Hmm? Don't you find that this is what is more rewarding? This is what we're going back to. People want that tie with family-owned businesses because it's, it, it, it's the upper edge for satisfaction and just human synergy. Yes, I agree. You know, to have the one-on-one -on -one interaction with somebody that, that actually knows what, what they're doing and... You know, the, the the internet. I certainly use it and what have you. But like for me to go in, like you know, Ron, for instance, the the guy that owns the fishing store. Hey, listen, I'm going fishing for such and such. It's so nice to be able to you know go and say, hey, what do you think you need? And he can give you feedback as yes. well as I do. Yes. If you come in and say, hey, decent, what do you think you know that that I need? I'm just getting started. You need this? Go out, hit it, come back, what have you. We have some golf balls. Um, you know, the, our service into the industry, golf club repair and what have you, we do, we do stuff. You know, folks come in, they want a set of clubs regripped, let's say. Mm -hmm. All right, you got a family, they come in, I like my clubs regripped. How many you got? Twelve clubs. We can do it for you in 25 minutes. Really? Yes. Go out in the market, shop around a little bit. Folks go out, they enjoy the market. Come back, they get their clubs done. You can't get that done. No, you any, can't. Anywhere. You can't. I, I, I love that aspect of the flea market here in Oldsmar because to be able to do that, walk in, and it's like placing your order, <laughs> and then and just, hey, see you in a little bit, we'll come back. Yes. And you can, you, it's like a one-stop shop for no matter what it is that you're looking for. But who knew? Golf, and then like you said, with Ron and fishing, 32 years speaks to success, right? Yes, ma'am. It really does. So, yes, ma'am. You know what? Don't hold off. I'm going to bring my family in because they all golf and they also go fishing. So it's time to get good old Madre out there on the golf course. I don't know, Come but on. I'm willing to try it. Come on out. We'll help you out with golf balls and golf clubs, and oh. I can help you with fishing tackle. The sale table golf balls, for sure. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks for joining us, and really, you must come and see Deason Smith. And let's, let's tell everybody where you're at, too, real quick. I'm in Antique Village, right off of Racetrack Road. Okay. Um, right pretty much in the middle of the market on the east side. East side. Okay. Yes, ma'am. So remember that, and let's get golfing. Thank you very much, and thank, thank you. you. We'll be right back. Hi everyone, welcome into My Chamber TV. We are the heartbeat of the Tampa Bay community. Today we are honoring the Upper Tampa Bay Chamber of Commerce and we are on location again right here at the Oldsmar Flea Market, one place that I frequent very, very often. I love it and I love the vendors here, the business owners. And actually right now we're going to introduce Rick and Julia Fazio with Christine's Tropical Plants. Christine is your daughter, right? Yes. You so bet. tell me all about, I've shopped there. I was just saying, I picked up a money tree plant from you guys not too long ago. It was, must have been after you had taken it over. Right. So tell me, it's a big place. It's a giant place. <laughs> yeah. What made you open up a, a tropical plant store here? We've been in plant business for over 30 years. Yeah. In one way or another. And it just seemed like the logical thing to do. 
And we sat, you know, we walked through the market and we said, this would be a great place for a location. And we've been here for seven years. We love it. Seven years, and people are always looking for really good, good plants that are healthy, and you help educate them as well. It takes a we lot do. of knowledge having a green thumb. Yeah, we, we educate everybody on, what, on their purchases. We want them to do good with them. Uh -huh. we and we take care of everything there. Unlike the big box stores, we are able to fertilize. We're able to take care of it. If it has bugs or disease, we're able to spray it. So it makes a big difference when you buy local. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Let me make sure, I mean, this is like music to my ears. So let's say I had something going on with my money tree plant, which uh -huh. I don't. It's growing, it's voluptuous, okay? But let's say I had a little something, something going on. Are you telling me that after I've had it for a little while, I can bring it in if it had some kind of a challenge and you could take a look at it and help me with it? We do offer that, that um, service, um, but usually you can just tell us what's wrong with it. Or yeah. pictures. Yeah, pictures. Ah. Pictures e emails. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Oh, very good. We answer a lot of emails. <laughs> That's really. Facebook That's... messages. <laughs> so you're on Facebook. Facebook. Okay. Twitter. What? Instagram. Okay. What are you under? Christine's. Got Christine's oh, drop type that into Okay. Search, oh, oh, good. I'm gonna friend you. I'm on <laughs> Facebook too. Perfect. And you'll yeah. also see what we get in every week as well, oh, okay. because we do. We are avid posters. <laughs> so. You, I know for a fact that you have very unique plants. My daughter-in-law and I were just there this past Sunday, and we frequent it whenever they come in from Gainesville. But the plants that you have, whether it's a hanging plant or a floor plant, I mean, everything is just so beautifully green and beautifully healthy. I would think that there's a lot of maintenance with that, or maybe there not is. so much. That's why we're here six days a week. Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. And, and you're it. open six days we're a week? Open we're six open six days a week. You so bet. get that, guys. You need a plant. You need a gift. We've got Mother's Day coming up, right? Yes. Easter. Oh, we're there every Easter. Day yeah. Easter lilies. Yeah. Easter oh, lilies. yes, yes, yes. We carry all the, all the regular things that you can find other places, but we also carry... Um, off the wall from those things. So okay. We carry a peace lily, but we also carry the sensation peace lily, which is bigger, more tropical leaves and voluptuous, but you can also get your basic peace lily too. So oh, that's great. It's, we carry both. And we're able to do that in that location. That's so when you talk about unique plants too, something came to mind, which my daughter-in-law, Jamie, loves, and it's, the flower is almost like a um, pitcher. Do you know what I'm talking about? The pitcher plants. Is that what it's actually they, called? They eat bugs. They eat everything. Oh, they do? Honeybees. They eat everything but yep. honeybees, yeah. Really? So um, I th she bought one of those not too long ago. Right. One of those very unusual plants. So what, can you give us some tips on how can we have a green thumb in Florida? Florida is the easiest Easy. place in the world to grow anything. <laughs> I love first it. First of all. I love um, it. And we can grow plants from all over the world. Like we carry fruit trees from all over the world. They all grow here. Yeah. Um, if it grows on the islands, nine times out of ten it grows here. Ah. So what are some of your hottest sellers, your most popular ones? Right now, philodendrons and hoyas. We carry over 200 varieties of them, and it's a big collector item right now. People philodendrons. Yes. Mm, that was my mom's favorite. And th Now, yeah. those are easy growers. That They're I know. Very yes. easy. So are the hoyas. <laughs> They're They're actually less care than most plants. Um, but then again, we do orchids, which are very easy in Florida. You can grow them inside or outside. And uh, rare varieties of rare varieties <gasps> orchids, oh, heliconia. Yeah. Um, heliconia is good for the hummingbirds. We do a lot of butterfly, um, specified butterfly and hummingbird plants, uh, bee plants, because people, uh, it's important that we keep our honeybee population up. Yes. So we do carry a lot of plants that, that will attract the honeybees. Um, also, because if you're planting your tropical fruit and citrus, you need, you need those honeybees for pollination. So oh. plant some butterfly and bee plants in between those. <laughs> Did you know that? To bring those I didn't know that. In, so. That's amazing. So yeah, you've got a lot Mix of... Mix up your garden. <laughs> oh, that sounds delightful. Oh, you're going to be seeing... I'm going to be hanging out here even more. I, I know I am. Um, let's back up a little bit to orchids. I have three sitting on, in, on my foyer uh -huh. together keeping each other company, and nothing is happening except for the leaves are beautiful and green. Uh -huh. What's the trick? How often do you fertilize? Fertilizer is a big thing. I like to eat, and the plants like to eat too. Oh, 
That might, that might <laughs> Imagine be. Imagine that. That might be what. I, well, what, what do I, it's, is it like orchid fertilizer it food? Is. We okay. Sell, and we, we sell specific that. fertilizers for all plants. We sell different um, fertilizers for palm trees, citrus trees, fruit trees, and vegetables. And then we do all around houseplant food, orchid food. Okay, so you've got all, all that available. there yeah. Okay, at, at your shop. Yeah, that might be the trick because my son gives me a, this gorgeous orchid and it'll bloom and it might keep blooming and then all of a sudden, <laughs> <laughs> and I'm going, well, the leaves look good. As long and as, as the, the, long it's as still leaves alive look good. And, and, yeah. and it yeah. will bloom again soon. It will? And oh, the good. the older they get, the more often they'll bloom because they're, they're, they're replicating themselves. Their babies will bloom. So it seems like they bloom longer when, as they get older because really? they're, they're having more bloom stalks. Yeah. You really love what you do. Just, she's talking do. about the babies will bloom. Really? <laughs> I love that. The kikis, yes. Yep. <laughs> and so does your daughter, Christine, uh, come into the shop as she well? She does. Um, she works with us. She has the animals. So She's the ant we oh, have bunnies and birds and that's cats. right. Yeah, yeah. That's where my grandson goes to see the animals. Yes, She's lots of kids come in to see the animals. Yeah, <laughs> very big on photography and art. So she does a lot of uh, photographing of the plants and, and drawing. Oh, well, that's <laughs> beautiful. <Or> painting. <laughs> that's beautiful nature and subject matter for taking photos sure. of, right? right? That's exciting. So you're here six days a week, correct? And are you here like as soon as they open? We're here 9.30, um, 930 to 5, Tuesday okay. through Friday, and 9 to 5, Saturday, Saturday and, Sunday. and Sunday. So we're here an hour later than everybody on Saturday to Sunday. Very good. So what made you open up a tropical plant business we, here? We, Have we, you always we, loved we this? We actually right. used to shop here. <laughs> oh, well, that's a good reason. We used to. We still do. But uh -huh. we, we started um, as shoppers here. And uh -huh. when, we, when he decided he wanted to open a plant store, um, I said, where, where are we going to do this? So we started looking around, and just the traffic. Foot traffic. The foot traffic that naturally flows through this place mm -hmm. is it, the it's first start. It's for it any was vendor. a winner anyway, um, to have that foot traffic. And we just built from that. We started in a little bitty corner booth off of B Row up front. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we moved to the back and then to this side, and now we're, we're in the largest space that we've been in thus wow. far. Wow, so you so. grew, and you've been here for seven years, and you grew obviously fast because your place is huge. Yes. I and mean, you can growing. get lost in there, <laughs> really. It's so peaceful. We do. <laughs> we do get lost. You what? We do we get do. lost in our jungle. Sometimes I can't find them. <laughs> <laughs> that could be a good thing on some days, maybe. I don't know. I'm just saying. I just I love the foliage in there. And it's everywhere. I mean, you walk in there and you just feel like you're in your own tropical paradise. And that's what Florida's about. But what's nice about it is you can go into their shop and leave with that tropical paradise, take it home. And just think of, you know, what you could do on your screened in lanai around the pool area. Do you help do some some, uh, I don't want to say landscaping, but do plantscaping and design. We do design for people. If okay. they bring in pictures and measurements, we can definitely help them. Mm -hmm. And we can lay it all out in the store so they can see it before they take it home. Really? And you take that time for your customers? We do. We see, do. I love family-owned businesses. There's, it's such a big difference. It's so much more personable. personable. Your customers engage. You engage with them and let, let them visualize exactly what they get to look forward to when it comes to taking a plant home. So I know, um, just from my own experience, and you mentioned it too, about the Hoyos and the... Um, Philodendrums. Philodendrums. There, and you have a lot of different species, right? We do. I only know of two, the variegated and the solid green ones. Uh -huh. what, what else do you have? It's a long list. We, Is it? Like I said, we have over 100 different varieties of philodendrums we carry. Okay, I just have so to come over there and see. Yeah, it's, it's, it's amazing. And, it's, and Hoyas. Um, and we sell to all 50 states right now. We're oh. on eBay. We're on uh, okay. a few of the other trading places. Okay, very good. So you're very well rounded well, the, over yeah, there. Yeah, the biggest thing is we're certified to ship to all 50 states. There's a lot of people out there that are doing it that aren't. Let's talk about that. I'm big on certification myself. And it is against the law, but they, but yeah, they, do, they, they do. do it anyway. Really? So tell me about this certification and why that is so special. There are certain agricultural requirements of uh, the different states throughout the United States. Like California doesn't want nematodes. Louisiana yeah. doesn't want fire ants. They want to make sure that those plants are healthy before they go there. Our online plants are actually treated differently than our Florida 
plant in store because plants. there are uh, different things that were required in, in Florida as well. So oh, um, okay. we know the agricultural requirements and we, uh, the states that require that were able to, we are certified to fill out the paperwork and put the stamps on the box certifying that this came from a place that has been inspected by the Florida Department of Agriculture. Bingo. And you advertise that on eBay, correct? We do. Yes. Okay. That's a really, really good point. Well, hey, guys, I'm really glad to have you here and interview you. And now I have yet one more shop to shop at. So that's exciting. And um, thanks for coming on My Chamber TV. It's been great interviewing you. I've learned a whole lot here. And thank you for joining us. We're going to be back with more right here with the Upper Tampa Bay Chamber of Commerce. Hi everyone, welcome back into My Chamber TV. We are the heartbeat of the Tampa Bay community and today we are featuring the Upper Tampa Bay Chamber of Commerce right here in the town of Oldsmar. We're at the Oldsmar Flea Market, one of my most favorite places to go ever. Seriously, I was just here this last weekend with my family, my grandson, and we're interviewing some great people and today we get a chance to interview Andy Bruyard. Did I get that right? Absolutely. Awesome. And you're the VP of Pridgen Management, the new management that has taken over this fabulous flea market, right? I have, I have the great pleasure of handling their hospitality side. There's so much excitement that's going to happen here at the flea market. So we're really excited. And good morning, Oldsmar. Yes, good morning, Oldsmar. You know, I heard through the grapevine that there's some really fabulous things happening. Can we talk about it? Well, you know, I think there's a lot of stuff coming in the future. Uh, but you know what? Everything and everyone always likes to know the history. Yes. And Oldsmar Flea Market has an amazing history. So we got yesterday that we're going to highlight here and all the history that brings to the table. Then we have today, and you already added some real excitement about today, with the early interviews of three of our unbelievable oh, vendors. I know. Uh, and what, a, what a diamonds in the rough that we have out here in the flea market that uh, they have a tremendous following and we want to bring their story to the whole community. And then of course there's the future, which for me, you know, the exciting future of this uh, flea market is going to be outstanding. Oh yes. So, you know, if you, look, if you look at the past, there's so much about Oldsmar and about the Oldsmar flea market that we want to educate and and share with the public and share with the community and we're going to take that by you know kind of converting this to a old florida themed area which is going to bring just a, a fun family everyone can come and have a good time at and then in present we're going to try to make sure we highlight all the wonderful vendors we have here i mean we saw three of the great ones today but oh no we doubt have a lot of unbelievable vendors here that have been here for years uh, have been doing a great job, have unbelievably unique and exciting products to share. Uh, and then and I'm going to share with you a few of the ideas that we're going to do for the future. I can't wait. <laughs> so what's going on? All right. So, f well, first and foremost, uh, one of my big projects at the beginning is we're going to bring to Oldsmar the venue at Oldsmar Flea Market. We're going to be opening a 12,000 square foot venue right here at the Oldsmar Flea Market. Uh, and, you know, this area really needs more places where, if you will look at every one of our vendors, they probably belong to an association or to sure. an organization sure. that would love to bring their meeting and their uh, opportunity here to the, to the flea market. We have the venue for that. So are you talking like a, an event center? An event center, absolutely. <laughs> and we know that the Upper Chamber uh, of Commerce, you know, Upper Tampa Bay Chamber of Commerce, all of your members and all of them, they have associations and organizations yes. that like to meet, have social events, have personal events, uh, professional events, and we're going to be the place to take them to. How fun is that? When is it? Do we have and a... That, and the reason that's exciting is we really feel that's going to be one of the first pieces of the future that's going to come Oh, my board. goodness. That is going to be such a draw. Yeah. For people moving here directly to the Oldsmar area, all the businesses and manufacturing and everything, do we have an ETA? Yeah, we have an ETA. We know it's going to be this year. Hopefully this year? sometime within the next three to six months. Yeah? We're going to start booking uh, events. And uh, we, we actually have a few surprises in store that we're almost ready to announce. So keep your eyes and ears open so that when we announce some of these exciting things that are about to happen, 
Awesome. Uh, you'll be ready for them, but that they'll bring a lot of people having a lot of fun. Oh, absolutely. One of the things that I love to come here, I know my son likes to come and get French fries and a beer. I like to get the French fries as well. What about um, eateries? Are you going to well, be... I, I love the fact that you asked that question because, you know, when it comes to a facility like this or, or, or an attraction or a destination like we are, it really has three components. It mm -hmm. has shopping. Yes. It has dining, which you just... Uh, and then it has entertainment. Entertainment! And what we, more do you need? And we plan on making all of those areas exciting. One of the statistics a lot of people don't know, in my background I managed hotels for many years, I worked for Walt Disney World. Everybody seems to think the attraction brings people to, to, the, to the area. But the number one thing visitors do, and even the people who live there, is shopping. Shopping is number one. Absolutely. Way ahead of everything else. Way yeah. ahead of dining, way ahead of attractions. But then after shopping, of course, shopping is what we're going to highlight here with all the vendors that we have. You know, not only do we have these amazing vendors who have been here for years, just in the last few months that the Pritchard Management has owned the facility, Grady, who's the owner of Pritchard Management, such a, such a visionary, but we've already added 20 to 30 new vendors that want to come here and start with the excitement that's going to happen in the future. No kidding. But shopping is the key. And the reason people come shopping is they want to find something unique. Mm -hmm. You did such a wonderful job as you were talking oh. with these, these three vendors. Think of it. Golf, fishing, yep. Yep. plants, old Florida. Yes. Those three elements are Florida. Yes. We all golf. We all yes. fish. We all love our plants here in Florida. Yep. And that's just the tip of the iceberg of the shopping that you can do here. But shopping is the key. But then when you're here, you have to eat. You have to drink. You know, Tampa is becoming a almost a destination for craft beers. Yes. So we're going to have some new, we have some very exciting, and again, this is coming in some new announcements shortly, some exciting new local name brand restaurants, beverages, uh, purveyors that are just going to come in here and shock the folks and they're going to bring a lot of folks over here and it's going to make excitement. Uh, and just in the, in the little time that we've been here, we've gone from anywhere from four to 6,000 guests on Saturdays and Sundays to last weekend we were about 8,000 guests each, no, each day. You know, I noticed it was very busy in here. Um, when, did you, when did the transition take place? Last fall. It's only been oh, a few Oh, just months. recent, just last fall. Months. Uh, and, as wow. can, and as you can see, there's already you can already feel an excitement yes. and a there, building. Yes, and there is a pulse. There, there is a heartbeat here that I never felt before. I'm getting chill bumps thinking about it because on, which is good because it's a little warm in here today with the lights. <laughs> but what I'm saying is, it was just, it was refreshing to hear the business owners, my gal that, um, that I met, gosh, it's been a year now, um, Miss Tony, she's such a beautiful person, and she has a, an aisle right, not too far from here, right down in the center, she's saying, I hadn't seen her in a while, and she said, my business is doing so well, and she said, Grady Pigeon is making some major changes, and I, and I felt, I could feel it even before she said that, because I noticed the last time I was here, which was last fall, or no, it was even before. I think it was in the summertime. And it, I, I really felt bad for the vendors because there's nobody here. I mean, it, w it was compared to what it was like recently. So it sounds like you've practically doubled. Well, and the excitement is your vendors who are here now, and you saw some that have been here a long time, they have their clientele that have been Oh, no doubt. For Return, years, yeah. Come. Oh, no doubt. But once you have that synergy of all the vendors yes. complementing each yes. other, you add the dining element. And then, of course, then there's the entertainment element. And the entertainment element, what's nice is you're going to have the entertainment throughout the, the flea market. Yes. And then we're going to have the event center that will have some concerts. And now let's talk a little bit about the future. Well, one is the theme, because everything today, you know, we want to be themes. And, and today, the number one thing guests want to go to is shopping. Yes. Then it's dining, like I said. Then it's entertainment. But the millennials and Matter of fact, probably the most of the population, we want an experience today. We don't want to just go eat. We don't want to just go shop. We want, when we go there, we want to have an experience. So here, what we'd like them to have is the total experience. I love this. You can this. come shopping. You can come dining. You can come and have, be entertained in many different ways. And if you're part of a big group, you can also hold your events here. So it'll yes. be really exciting. Uh, and, and, and it's going to be varied. It's going to, so that down the road, this is going to be an attraction destination. I believe Seven so. Seven days a week, night yes. time. Really? 
it's just going to be exciting. <laughs> a few little ideas that we have is, is the event facility is probably the first piece of that puzzle. Mm -hmm. But we also are looking at a grassy area, outdoor, amphitheater type look. Nice. The and there's that much space to Another do that. It would be kind of like a man cave sports bar in one area where you, oh, can, do good. Some, you can do some fish. Oh, fishing. that's even better yet. I can drop the boys off there at the man cave and go. us girls go shopping. I love it. Zip line, what about the women's see a real cave? Alligator? <laughs> yes, right. Well, one of the nice oh. things we've thought about out maybe outside of the of the venue uh -huh. is an area where you can do multiple things. Add some new shopping areas. Oh, I but love also that. Some entertainment things that you yes. have have at you know one of the things I love to see is you know we recently just in the last couple of weeks we had these the Florida Fair okay and I yes said, you know what the reason the Florida Fair is successful for two weeks uh -huh. is they have a lot of things going on yeah that's right. what we're gonna have right. but instead of only being here for two weeks you'll be a come year round and year round you'll have festivals and different things that we're going to do each weekend we'll have things going on at nighttime so like we talked even like the Oldsmar days right Oldsmar days yes once a year but yes. we'll have festivals like Oldsmar Days every weekend. Uh, yeah, it would be Oldsmar week. Days almost. Yeah, every week. I love this. This is so exciting. I had no idea. Really, yeah, I had no idea. I lo I've loved it for the 20 years that I've come here. It's it's I, to me coming here and going shopping. That's my that's. That's my woman cave, okay? It really is because like, you don't think of anything else. You just relax. I come here early. I bring my coffee and just, you know, go around. I love talking to the vendors. Everybody's so nice in here. And what I also love is it's family-oriented, a lot of family-owned business. I, I love to support family-owned businesses, and this is so exciting to see that you've made such progress so quickly. But you know what? That's how you make things happen, right? Exactly right. And I think Grady Pridgen has this vision that the most important element of it is you have an existing vendor base. Yes. That what's most important to them, most important to us. Of course. Is increased traffic so yes. they do more business. Yes. Because if every individual entity is successful, mm -hmm. the whole flea market will be successful. So working with the upper, you know, upper Tampa Bay Chamber of Commerce is important. Oh, you absolutely. you got all those businesses yes. that can lend to the success of what this will be like. So again, we'll get on the map. You know, every city, every big city, whether it's Seattle with their fish market, or it's New York with their smorgasbord, or it's Cleveland with a world-renowned flea market, uh -huh. they have a place like that that people can go will be that place in Tampa Bay. I, I tell you, I could sit and talk to you about this all day long, but we're running out of time. I want to thank you, Andy, and congratulations for such a great job that you're doing, and you need to check this place out. Come this weekend. See what's here for yourself. It is an experience. You will love every moment of it, as I do. We'll see you back more thank with you. My Chamber TV. Thanks. It's a pleasure. Hi everyone, welcome back into My Chamber TV. We are the heartbeat of the Tampa Bay community and we are here featuring the Upper Tampa Bay Chamber of Commerce right here in the city of Oldsmar. But we happen to be on location at the Oldsmar Flea Market, which is my home away from home. I love coming here. <laughs> we have Jerry Custon yeah. It's joining us to share some really great news and some bullet points. So I'm gonna turn this segment over to you, Jerry. Okay, thanks, Barbara. Yeah, the, uh, the thing we're excited about this morning, obviously, what's really got me pumped up is this morning sitting here listening to everything and the vision that Grady Pridgen and the vendors have. And, you know, it just goes back to everything that it's all about relationships. Yes, yes, you know? yes. And, uh, and that's what's so great about this. But in talking to Andy, as he's talking about that new event center, I was sitting and thinking because uh, one of your vendors this morning has a wife that's a nationally touring act. So maybe what we could do is work with them and put together you know, some type of event in that event center featuring her and uh, and other maybe talented people from the flea market and call it Oldsmar's Got Talent. I love or, that. You know, or something like that. So, I love it. So anyhow, it's a little early in the morning for me to be thinking like that. But <laughs> no, it's not. Yeah, but, uh, <laughs> but, uh, but that may be something we could do. Absolutely. You guys are always making things happen. I mean, yeah. you're always giving me some great new surprises. So right. continue. Yeah, the, the, the big surprise, uh, it, and it's one we worked hard for, so it's not quite a surprise, but it was announced yesterday. Uh, the Tampa Bay Partnership has uh, done a lot of studies of how our region compares to other like regions in the country in terms of size and capacity and things of that nature. And basically take a look at the strengths and weaknesses of the Tampa Bay area 
uh, against, uh, you know, Charlotte and other places like that. And one thing they found is that our talent development system is a lot weaker than a lot of those other big places, Austin, mm -hmm. Texas, mm -hmm. Houston, or whatever it is. Right. So they've got a grant uh, from J.P. Morgan Bank, $300,000 basically to initiate a talent pipeline management process here in the Tampa Bay area. And they were looking at five industries to work with construction, healthcare, hospitality, information technology, and manufacturing. So we've been working through that process to say, manufacturing is one you really want to do. And they've finally narrowed it down. Yes, they made a decision. So manufacturing will be one of the, one, will be one of the two that they do. I believe the other one's going to be healthcare, but anyhow, this is a national model that has uh, basically been adopted by several states because of the difference of it in, in terms of talent development. Uh -huh. It's not being led by the education community and advisory boards and things of that nature. It's being employer led and demand driven. Ooh. So what I have done is what I've been part of at any rate is drawing those manufacturers from our region together to convince the partnership that, hey, it is an issue here. You guys already identified the issue. We have people that are committed to doing this from various sectors of the manufacturing industry. They will show up and they are committed to lead this effort to develop the talent that we need to sustain and enhance and grow the manufacturing sector in the Tampa Bay. Wow, that so, is big. So that's big news. Oh, that is big news. So we're very, very happy about that. Uh, uh, now the pro now as, as one of my manufacturers says, they, that's great, but now the hard work begins. Yes, exactly. Yeah, the easy work is the easy work has been generating the interest and the uh, uh, you know and, and, and the momentum here. Now it's going to be down to nuts and bolts and hard work and making it work. So, so we got a year to do it. I am so excited for you yeah, guys. Well, you know, when we talk about being the heartbeat of the community, it, we do this with the pulse right. of what the the city does and i tell you the upper tampa bay chamber of commerce is one of my favorites because you never cease to amaze me with right. new things that are coming and growing it's like one big happy family and like you talk you talk all the time about building relationships, relationships. engaging with your customers yeah. engaging with the businesses engaging with the community finding a way to win-win not yes. e not either or right? that's right you stay away from the either or stuff and try to will both and win-win philosophies and and build those relationships. Yes, and, you know, yes. Things can happen. Yes. Well, you know, like Andy was saying, <clears throat> excuse me, with the millennial generation coming up, they don't want either or. Are you kidding me? And they're so very young, they know what they want. They want it all. I can't blame them, exactly. right? They want entertainment. They want to have food. They want to be able to shop. They just want that whole experience, and I love that. Well, now you got me on another subject. For okay. <laughs> Which good segue. Say. Oh, yeah, it's a good segue for another thing to happen. You know, we, we have our education foundation. Well, the Tampa Bay Downs has decided this year that they would like to sponsor uh, five, five $2,000 scholarships. And what they did is they basically had a contest with the millennials over, this, uh, over the track season is uh -huh. developing uh -huh. to give them ideas on how to engage the millennials in, ra in racing and those kinds of things to keep it gone. And exactly what you said is they want it all, okay? <laughs> and they want that total experience. They, they, uh, we just had to help them go sort through uh, 95, I think they had 95 applications. We helped them sort through the last 20 and they've now selected their five winners, which is also this week, so that's pretty good. Uh, but in reading those ideas, it was exactly that. You gotta get social media, we gotta have entertainment. Yes. You know, hey, those horses are wonderful, but after the horses, I'd like to go. I'd like to go have a drink. I'd like to do this. I'd sure. like to do that. So uh, that we'll see how that impacts the the actual structure of the Tampa Bay Downs and things. So, so that's another way that we're getting, you know, trying to get involved and and trying to build that community. I'll tell you, you know, the Chamber of Commerce is the way to go. If you live in the area or if you're coming to the area, you know somebody that's coming to the area, check out the Upper Tampa Bay Chamber of Commerce. We're here at My Chamber TV and you come on board. We raise the awareness on what's happening in the community at least once a month. And I'll tell you, I have learned more 
just by doing these shows with you guys than I have in the community. And I've, I've lived in the community for 30-some years. Yeah, we're, we're active. Yeah, you are yeah. very active. Yeah, the one other thing I wanted to say before we go is uh, next month we're doing our 57th annual Oldsmar Days and Nights. That'll be March 29th, 30th, and 31st. Love it. At Ariel's Park. Uh, our uh, big bands are uh, Greg Billings on Friday night, Stormbringer on Saturday night, and the Black Honkies on Sunday and a lot of great support bands in between there. So it's another way of looking at Oldsmar Gut Talent. We also do the only annual Oldsmar Days Parade, which we'll do on Saturday. And uh, I just got an email yesterday that Ariel's, one of Ariel's grandsons, Tom Rowe, will be here in his original 1918 Rio. Oh, wow. Driving that. Wow. And two of Ariel's great-grandchildren will also be here, as well as the president of the Oldsmar Club of America, and the president of the Antique Oldsmar Club of America. That is going to be so much so, fun. So and I love Oldsmar days. Yeah. Been there in the past. Yeah. Thank you so much, Jerry. Thank you. All right. And thank you for joining us. And we'll see you again soon right here on My Chamber TV. This is the Cannabis Podcast, powered by TrueLeave on Radio Influence. It's an inside look and the scientific facts in and around the world of medical cannabis. Now, here is your host, Ian Beckles. He's a successful entrepreneur, published author, top listing agent, a real estate and finance expert that goes to bat for you every day as a consumer advocate. Your host and the consumer quarterback, Brandon Rimes.